What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of RX Bars, Quest Nutrition, Hint Water, Einstein Bagels, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry too. Rise25 hosted events this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, Las Vegas, probably coming to a city near you. Not yet in, in Georgia. Erica, but um, if you see the value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate to get your business to the next level, go to rise25.com, contact us to find out when and where our next event is going to be and if it's a fit for you. Um, I am very excited today. I have loved this product. I've, I've had it. It's delicious. Uh, we have Erica Shahusky, founder of Good Zebra, which is a protein-packed animal cracker set out to challenge the snack food industry. Now, Erica, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure animal crackers have had any innovations in the past 20 years. I remember them when there were those little red packages with the circus animals in them. And as yours are way different because those are behind bars and yours are kind of free spirits, I guess you could say. Um, but what's interesting about the animal crackers is that you guys have 12 grams of protein per two ounce serving. There's no refined sugar. It's sweetened with only organic honey and coconut sugar and has no artificial ingredients or preservatives. And the 11 unique spirit animals, animals are inspired by street and tattoo art. And the flavors include vanilla, lemon, and chai with peanut butter and chocolate not far behind. Probably when you're listening to this, they may already have it. Erica has worked with a diverse clientele before starting Good Zebra from the Rolling Stones, she's going to tell all, to the (laughs) Olympic Games. And Good Zebra can be found in Pete's Coffee and Tea across the nation, select retailers on Amazon and on the Good Zebra website. Erica, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. What an intro. What was a big breakthrough beside, like, after the humbling pieces? Where did sure. you like, okay, like finally, I think I made the right decision here. Yeah. I would say that I'm still in the humbling mode. Okay. <laughs> the always, humbling well, always, mode. always be in the humbling mode is a good yeah, place to I be. Hope, so I actually hope I will be always there mm-hmm. um, and incredibly grateful for the time that people give when they do choose to share feedback. What about Pete's co- – I mean, Pete's not, not every you know, company or product can get into Pete's coffee and tea. Yeah. Um, how did that happen? So, you know, we, I had the pleasure of meeting them at a trade show and I kind of, I saw them, I saw them walk by and they'd always been on my radar of like a dream location. I had lived in San Francisco when I was at E-Trade in the early days and, you know, had spent quite a bit of time in and out of California in general throughout my career and kind of always made that my, this is my coffee spot when I'm here. And so I had really coveted but I also covet their brand and kind of they have a you know I like to call it a cult like loyal following um, of consumers and so I had tried to get in touch with them and they're a really difficult company to get through to like they very you know they're, they're very protective um, in regards to you know you don't just cold call them um, and so and they don't have a cattle call when it comes to submissions of new products and such it's more around like they go out and they curate the way that they partner with people and are very conscious of that and so I I had seen them walk by at a trade show and I just decided I'm going to go chase them down and talk to them and introduce myself and ask them if they'd come back to my booth because they had walked right by. And what's most fascinating about Pete's is that um, when we were developing our chai animal cracker, um, I said, I want this product to pair. I wanted all of our product to pair with coffee. And it was very important to me because one of the key times during the day that I know I have to have a snack whether no matter how small it is, something has to go in with my coffee, the first couple sips of my coffee, or I get ill, racy and weird. Right, right. And so I think so many of us got whether you buy a Danish or a you know, another 
bar I won't name or something that's easy there when you're at the coffee counter if you haven't had your breakfast and you're there getting your coffee most people have the action of buying something else so it was important to us that our formulas paired really well with coffee and that they kind of gave that moment mentally and so the chai in particular when we decided what coffee to pair it with it was we ordered up peaks and that's what we so that's the story that I shared with them and so they um, called us into the office not not as personally, but the product in um, to do some internal testing, and they did, and that's how we ended up there. That's great. That's great. The, <laughs> and again, like you haven't taken the traditional route for marketing, even though that's kind of that's your background. Because um, I was reading, most people's strategy would be going into grocery. Correct. You actually took a much different strategy. Correct. Yeah. So, again, another one of my philosophies is that I believe that the way we grocery shop today is so different than the way the grocery channel operates the business. So, another um, story of you know my my strong belief in a lack of innovation in a really important channel. So, for so many years now, I couldn't even put the date on it when we all, as anybody being aware of world economics and discussions in the news, grocery is, was struggling channel of business, and people started talking about they were only shopping the perimeter. And nutritionists come out and say, you know, when you go to the grocery store, the best thing you can do is learn to only shop the perimeter, and everything in the middle is evil, and everything on the outside is fine. You know, whether it's fresh meats, fresh dairy, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, they're all in the perimeter of the store. And so that, that, that complaint and that reality has been there for such a long time that I think it's ingrained in us that if we are going to shop the inner portion of a store, it's typically because there's an action that we need to fill. So, or, or a, a miss in our lives. So we need laundry soap. We need toilet paper. We need something that you're going exactly there for, but you're actually on a mission versus a shopping experience. We don't walk up and down the aisles to discover things. Unfortunately, I go and find the chip aisle and I go down and I look at everything, but yes. Okay. So, so you have, you have a reason though, like there's a, there's a built in desire for you there of something that, that you're familiar with. And I think that that is, how people shop the internal portion of a store and but but wandering to check out new brands is an unusual behavior most yeah. people are there and they they brand recognition they know they're looking for the yellow bag and that yellow bag is lays and you don't have to read the label it's just auto and so in the in the journey to that space in a grocery store you have these ends of the aisle that they call end caps and that you walk by them and that's obviously you know the entree into that aisle it, it oftentimes indicates what's there so you get to the the aisle that has chips and there's an end cap filled with chips well in my you know not so humble belief until retailers stop putting doritos and pepsi cola on those end caps you're not going to convince me to enter that aisle for a sense of discovery. You're going to remind me that, oh, maybe it is Super Bowl and those are items that I would choose to put in my house for a special occasion. But otherwise, you're not going to get me to break that aisle. Mm. And so with that mindset, until retailers choose to innovate the way that they merchandise a store, I felt felt like it, it doesn't make sense for us to go and beat ourselves up in that channel. It's a very expensive channel to do business in. And then the second is that um, because of the product being called Animal Crackers, immediately there's this autumn, you know, the, the retailer's response is, oh, cookie and cracker aisle. That's where it goes. And I would say, actually, I think we belong next to protein bars. Well, why? Well, we're these small bags. We're two ounce servings. It's a single controlled portion. We don't make large format packaging for a reason. It's not modern. It's not how people snack. Um, and that we have the protein equivalent to every major protein bar on the market. And that if you can't merchandise us with protein bars, we're not going to win because that is a place where people come for a sense of discovery or they're willing to mm-hmm. give a try because what's it's a different one? demographic. Yeah. yeah. And so between those two reasons, I felt like it was a lost lost effort at this stage in the business. And so we really have focused the business model on coffee shops, fitness centers, airports. We're trying to get an airline right now. And Is that uh, hard? Yeah, it is. It is. It's a price war. Hmm. It's a price war. And then hotel mini bars and really kind of like places that people want to hang out is how I like to describe mm. it. So where is a place that you have a bit more of a captive audience and a smaller, but hotel you have a lot mini more. Hotel mini bar is good. Yeah. 
much harder to get there than right because they have many many products at a grocery store and very few products at a coffee shop for example so you know you really have to win to get in there but once you're in you're in hopefully you can prove your product by doing great demos and traffic driving efforts to get people there and the sense of awareness yeah so you have some short-term stuff and then some longer-term plays with because mm -hmm. like someone gets into the airlines or even maybe a hotel chain or something like that 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 could be huge yeah um, exactly so you well, know and to your point about traditional marketing um in and untraditional marketing it's you know i think that one of the things about being a a very small brand in a sea of big brands the cost of entry is so significant, not just, you know, launching a product and, you know, packaging and, and, you know, the formulations and how do you really scale that and build a team, but the actual cost to take the marketing efforts somewhere beyond grassroots have been a bit more challenging. So we decided to focus on the places that we sold the product so that it did a little bit of the work for us and then a very digital based marketing plan. Yeah. Erica, so many questions, so little time. I'm looking and it just flew by. So I want to mention a few things because I know that you have a bunch of things on your schedule. One, I want to encourage people to go to goodzebra.com and specifically, and the products are delicious, but um, I took the spirit animal quiz <laughs> and uh, they have a spirit animal quiz. And um, I wanted to talk about that with you, but we don't have time for it. Um, and I was going to have you guess what my spirit animal is. I don't know. What do you know? What your did you have you taken it recently? What's your spirit animal? Oh, of Based course I know what mine is. Okay. I think mine's pretty obvious. I'm clearly a zebra. Okay. Well, I didn't yeah. know what the choices were because I only got my, my choice. So I was the, uh, the turtle. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I, I encourage people to check, check that. That should be in some magazine. Is that... Have they gotten into like Cosmopolitan or one of these magazines? Like, What's your spirit animal? I totally see that. Right. Have any of those picked it up? The, like, no the one has picked. Quiz? No one's picked up the quiz yet, but that would be that's a good angle to get. Yeah, I like that. that. Um, so there's three things. I'm gonna let you choose because I know yeah. we're out of time. But um, I want to talk about the challenges of female entrepreneurship. I have sure. that on my list also. Um, I don't know if there's a short Olympics or Rolling Stone story uh, to finish on. I'm sure you have a lot of crazy stories. So I'll let you take your pick of one, two, or whatever. Okay, maybe I'll answer the Rolling Stones one first. So how, does it, how about we make it just a little bit of an interesting fact versus a crazy story? Whatever you like. Yeah, one of one of one of the things I pride myself on is the fact that I I don't hang out other people's um, stories um, unless they so choose to be a part of it. Okay. Okay. Fair um, enough. So, what I would say that's interesting about you know, what I had the pleasure of doing backstage parties and meet and greets with the Rolling Stones, and so um, and being the worldwide sponsor, and so it was really a wonderful life chapter that I have an incredible amount of gratitude for having been a part of, and one that I would never survive a second time. Um, Why is that? Wait, way too much burning the candle at both ends mm. of the spectrum. You know, have a day job, which is called corporate, and have a night job, which was taking that corporate relationship and executing it with um, VIPs around the world. It's like a little too heavy for anybody to handle for too long, in my, for me at least, let's say. Mm. Um, however, something that I found super fascinating is before every show, Mick Jagger, or Mick, um, runs. And what he does is they kind of quarantine a hallway and they put up pipe and drape in black and he just does laps back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and he kind of gets himself pumped up and in the zone mm. and when he's ready he goes straight from that onto the stage and so he kind of shows up to the stage already like body heated up and kind of ready to go and mm. as the ultimate performer like the guy who just turns it on when he's there it was something that really um, stuck with me personally because it made me say okay what's your warm up going to be like mm. how do you make sure that every time you need to get on your own platform, whatever it happens to be, that you're ready to turn it on in the same way that he's already heated up and ready to go. So mm. I love that's that. Kind of a little snippet. So have you and figured so, out yours? Your, what's going to get you into state? Yeah. 
So mine happens to be meditation. Oh. Like I take I take a few minutes nice. and instead of going eyes closed, you know, sitting down, I actually stand in the mirror and I actually talk to myself in the mirror. And I make sure that I use the words looking myself in the eyes out loud that correspond to what it is that I want to convey. Mm. And not not rehearsing the message, but ensuring that if you know, I, I you know, I want to remind myself to speak, you know, to be humble and yet speak with confidence. And, you know, so I like to use a lot of contradictory words. And so for me, I've used that technique ever since that moment in time. Mm. So, so should any of these VIPs like be eating good zebra? Like these touring <laughs> companies that you used to work with? Shouldn't they all be eating good zebras? I'm just would, asking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. That's on the list. Okay. It's on the list. Just Don't you worry. Sure, just making sure. Yeah, the and Rolling Stones. Yeah, sorry. No, I was gonna say just the you know the Rolling Stones and other people you you know who have who be like yeah we'll we'll bring good zebra on tour. Right, right. Or we'll just take a picture. Yeah, <laughs> How about take that? a picture. <laughs> I'll take, I'll just take that picture of you, you know, like, um, I, it would actually be kind of funny. You know, we have, we have a couple of professional athletes that eat our product and it's always hysterical to see like a giant football player with like a little animal cracker. You're like, yeah, you rock. <laughs> are there ones out there that are, that you can mention? Like who's, who's been seen in the wild eating good zebra? Yeah. So I would say the, probably the most recognizable is Jillian Michaels. Mm. That's a good one to have. Yeah. She, she's all about the chai ones. Cool. Love that. She likes chai. Yeah. So that's probably that one. And, um, you know, we can, you know, I, I'd be happy to regroup with you and talk about the female entrepreneur thing in greater, yeah. you know, you We're know, I mean, not I have an opinion. <laughs> yes. That could be like a 45 minute conversation. Um, so let's leave people with this. Um, Erica, Everyone should go to goodzebra.com. Check it out. You can go out on Amazon. If you happen to be frequent at Pete's uh, Coffee and Tea, check out Good Zebra there. Um, what else should we leave people with? Where should they go or anything else about Good Zebra that we haven't mentioned? You know, I think that really covers it up. We do have a bunch of specialty stores that are available, a list on our website where you can go in and put your zip code and find whether or not there's one near you. And you could also help us spread the word by asking your local retailers um, to pick us up. Very cool. They can email us through the website and we can take care of that real quick and easy. Erica, I want to be the first one to thank you. Um, I loved hearing the stories, so I appreciate it. Everyone check out goodzebra.com. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand